Hi, I'm Sean Reardon, and welcome to the latest edition of the Mayor's Corner, a very special edition coming to you live from 59 Low Street, which is going to be the future home of New Report Youth Services. And I have a really special guest with me today as well, 17-year veteran of the city of New Report. She literally built youth services from scratch. Of course, I'm talking about New Report Youth Services Director Andy Eglund. How are you doing, Andy? I'm good, thank you. So we're really excited about this building and, and really the possibilities that it has for youth services. So. Uh, just a little update of where we are in our process. So last night we had a, a pretty important city council meeting and we had a vote that didn't go our way, which was uh, the zoning that would need to be changed for, for youth services to come here on Low Street. But a really big vote happened last night and that's for the funding that we're gonna use for the design concept and the cost estimate of the building. So we've got an architecture firm that we're gonna work with. Uh, my special projects manager, Kim Turner, is heading up this project and, we're, and with the youth services board and their staff, we're going to work with the architect and come up with a concept design and then really we'll have a better idea of what the budget of this project is going to be. But I thought I'd bring Andy along today just because obviously we're so excited for the possibilities of this building but you know she knows one what we need and she knows what kind of programming space is required but she also knows what the kids want too. So I thought you know, I'd give Andy a little bit of a chance to try to talk about all the possibilities here at 59 Low Street. Awesome. Um, I think most people in the community have no idea what this building is, right? <laughs> right they drive right. by it. Um, I don't I think everyone that's come inside has said, oh my gosh, it's so much bigger than I thought it was. Absolutely. Um, it is about 6,000 square feet. So it's a, it is a sizable building. Um, it has two garage bays right now, and then it has an internal space that was used as the emergency ops. So there's some offices, um, a bathroom, a small kitchenette. So when we look at this building, it doesn't work the way it is now, right. um, which is why we know we need it to be renovated to meet the needs. We need a building that is um, healthy for kids, that has is set up with the spaces for a youth center. We've been in two schools um, and adapted the schools for our use, but really a rec center doesn't look like a school. Right, it doesn't feel right. like a school. It shouldn't feel like right. a school. And it's a reason why it's two different things. Right, right? it's two I different mean... things. And youth services has grown so much that we have um, three divisions now. So we have our recreation and enrichment, we have our youth center, which is our teen, middle and high school programming, and then we have our services and supports. So when we look at this space, we think about those three needs and what they'll look like. And it's really important to us to be able to create a space separate for the teens um, because older kids don't go to a youth center that they've grown up going to. So there needs to be kind of an area that has rec and enrichment programming space and then space for the teens as they grow up um, and wanna come into the after school and the evening events. Um, and this building can allow us to do all of that, which we're really excited about. Yeah, and just to talk about this building a little bit too, it was the emergency management center, I guess, for a, for a long time here. And we're right next to the armory uh, that's next door. But it literally looks like everyone was working in this space one day and just left. So it, it's, it's kind of bizarre when you walk in here. It looks like something out of maybe Jurassic Park. Yeah. But again, the possibilities are really great. And I think what, another thing that we should talk about is some people just thought we could do a little bit of remediation with this building and we could just put NYS in there. And I just want to let everybody know that, that that really isn't an option here. I go, this this building is not built for what we need it to be for NYS, which is why it is going to be a much bigger project. But I think that's what's exciting about working with the architect and coming up with those design concepts because then when we go to back to city council where we want to try to get all 11 on board with this we're going to have to we're going to be able to really present with them a really clear vision and a clear budget of what we need here at nys now and into the future because being in this space is going to allow us uh you know to be here for the long run for nys yeah and i i would just add to that that um although construction isn't my background <laughs> i've learned a lot although about she's learned it a lot the last i've learned years. a lot the last few years so one of the pieces about this building i think it that's really beneficial is it really just is a shell um, there, are, other than walls with drywall on them, um, demoing it then leaves us just an open space. Um, there are two walls for the garages, but, um, but they already have doorways into them. So we know those walls we won't move. Um, everything else though, we can just pretty much put up new, you know, new, new walls. Um, one of the things for the youth center that's really important to us is um, Sightline, being able to see kids in the building, making sure that we have secure entrances and exits, which we did not have in our last two buildings. Yep. Um, and, you know, again, this, this building will give us the opportunity to design to meet those needs. Um, and, and we're looking at a permanent space. So the idea of doing a simple, re, you know, rehaul um, doesn't doesn't get us to that goal of a permanent space that we don't need to touch again. Right. I mean, this is a, a major project and we want to do it right. So, I mean, I think that's what's exciting about it for me, that being, you know, a new mayor and coming in with a new administration, but I get to work with Andy, who's got a great staff already in place. 
and now they we know now we can all get together and kind of talk about you know what are the things that are important to us how do we make this space work and how do we make it best for kids going forward too mm -hmm. uh, so again we're really excited about it but let's walk around and we'll show you a little bit more of the building so this is the larger of the two garage bays again there's one wall here that is um, cinder block so we probably won't be moving that but it gives you an idea of the window sizes that we have and this part doesn't have a ceiling, um, a drop ceiling. So you get an idea of the height that the rest of the building actually has. Um, I know we've already started talking about, you know, how we can utilize that to have an open feeling. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we did, we've done two um, feasibility studies for youth services, one at the Brown and one on this space. And we had young people involved in both of them. And so we got feedback about what it is they're looking for in the space. A big one was um, having it not feel like school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so being able to create a space that's a little different, um, to have areas that are both large group interactive, but small groups where they can hang out with friends. Yep. Um, we really want to look at utilizing multi-purpose spaces so that we can take a space and have it be set up for one thing one day and then switch it over for something right. the next Flexibility. day. Absolutely, we have to be able to be flexible. We actually have talked about even with the garage doors, um, the Andover Youth Center, they have a garage door that, go that yeah. goes up out to a patio. Yeah. And like, it's just a cool element to add um, so that when the nice weather comes, you know, they, they mix it up a little by opening up a big space. But I think just in this space alone, you can see there's at least space for two, you know, a couple um, programming spaces. I know some of the other feedback is they'd really love to have a kitchen that they can cook in. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've utilized a lot of kitchens throughout the town over the last 10 years for cooking activities. Um, and, it, you know, uh, art area, um, but more of a maker space. So something that's a little broader than just art. And yep. a space like this really gives us that option. One of the designers we talked to said, oh, the best thing you can do is instead of an art room, do a makerspace, put a drain in the bottom, yeah. you know, so that you can actually utilize it for like all kinds of things, oh, you know, great. hang a big chain so you could bring in motors if you wanted to work on shop stuff. Yep. So I think there's a, just a lot of ideas of how to use space in different ways. Yeah, and I think what's exciting about the space too is the outside too, is, there's so much possibilities. You know, it's an area that it hasn't really been kept up over the years. So, you know, we're talking about what landscaping can be done, what kind of play spaces can we create outside. You know, we did an examination of the wetlands in the area and we know we have a lot of space. The wetlands is kind of pushed back on the property. So again, we have a lot more options than we thought we did. You know, also thinking about where we could put a modular gym, which is gonna be yeah. kind of closer to the street that we're looking at right now. Um, and just to give people an idea what what's the building's being used for right now, our parks department has been working out of here a little bit. So, I mean, the, you know, the other thing that's going to happen out of this, we're going to have to find a place to put parks, but m my office is working on that. And we have a couple options that we're exploring. Uh, but again, just the possibilities being right across the street from our biggest population that utilizes youth, uh, youth services at the yeah. Knock and Mullen School, it really is the perfect location. And it really gives us an opportunity to kind of create a, a safer street on Low Street and slow down the traffic there and have a nice crossing between the two, the two buildings. So again, it, it's a much bigger project, but the possibilities are really endless for this space. Yep, and it allows us to have full day programming like we've been having. I think a lot of people have the misconception that youth services is a glorified after school program. Um, if you're not involved in youth services as a community member, you might not have an idea of all right. of the things we actually do. Um, so we have daytime programming for young kids, um, for kids under five. We have support groups that run at night. We've got, you know, we've absorbed the Mother's Club um, programming, so we'll be relaunching that in the fall. Um, so we have a, you know, we just have a lot of things that go on all day. And so this, having our own space would really allow us to get back to doing that. Yeah, and I think that's part of the, you know, message that we're trying to get out there and get out this information about youth services, you know, in many different ways as possible. Because if you don't have kids and you're not involved, then you really don't know, you know, the value and, and really how much that they're doing now in your report. You know, it's not like the old pro, uh, playground days where you just kind of right. go into some parks and doing some things after school. There's so much, really anything that kids do now outside of school probably falls under youth services uh, uh, in some way, shape or form. So, you know, we're going to be working really hard, youth services and the mayor's office, is getting, you know, all those great messages out to the public um, you know, because there's a large population in town that, that, you know, have, you know, either the cage, kids have aged out of the program or, or they're new to the area. Yeah. So, you know, it's all great information to get out there. And again, we just value our youth services so much and we really want this space to happen. And so yes, again, we, do. we are moving in the right direction. So if you're a big fan of youth services, I know most of you there are, hang in there. We're working through this process. You know, again, our goal is, my goal at least, is to get us into this building by next spring. Um, you know, again, we're heading in that direction. Again, the process will be 
you know, get through the concept design and uh, you know, get an idea on budget. And we're going to go back to city council and ask them to, to fund the, the project. And then if we can get everyone involved and agree on, on that, and then we'll, we'll go back to the zoning that, that, that failed last night. We're going to go back. I'm going to pass that. And then we get to you know finish the design and go out to bid and, and, and hopefully break ground. So Absolutely. there's a process here. We're trying to follow it and we're trying to be <laughs> patient, but it's not always easy. So again, if you want to help out, please reach out to the mayor's office of Newport Youth Services. We're always looking for for volunteers or people that, that yes. want to help us get the word out. And uh, just uh, you know just keep 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 informed and keep following what we're trying to do and realize that we are trying to get everyone on board with this because I, we do think it's the best thing for Newport and especially it's the best thing for our kids. So. Thank you for coming to our special edition of the Mayor's Corner. Uh, Andy, thank you for joining thank me. You. I love having guests. This is going to be an every week thing for me <laughs> yeah, now. It, it takes the pressure off me a little bit. So I love having my director here, who I think the world of and who's doing so many good things. And I will see you soon uh, on the next Mayor's Corner. But I just want to remember, remind everybody, I am leaving for North Carolina tonight. So you might get a special edition, Top Gun edition of the Mayor's <laughs> Corner. So I will let uh, NCM Hub uh, see if they can do that for me. If so, uh, keep an eye out. That'll be coming to you really soon. But uh, I'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs> Bye.